Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to make a mobile base for my planar jointer. That sounds good? Stick around. So a mobile base is something I've been meaning to build for a while. And while I've got some downtime in the workshop, good as time to do it as any. So I wanted to make a base that lifts the planar jointer up to a slightly higher working level for me. And also, it's completely mobile, and this is what I've come up with. This is our mobile base. It's made of oak, it's finished with a couple of coats of Osmo, for no other reason than I had it lying around the workshop. It's got these two large joists here going across, and these are 60 by 45 stock. As I say, it's all made of oak. And it's got an internal frame that the planar jointer sits on. Now, this internal frame is dadoed in quite a long way into these main joists. So the idea is the main weight of the machine sits on here and it's transferred into these joists and that makes it super, super, super strong. It's also got this lip here and that's basically making a two-ply joint out of oak, the grain here, orientated differently to the grain on this one. And that just gives me a lot of strength down this piece here. It also gives a little lip that the end of the planar joint you can butt up to. There's a second one of these that eventually will slot into this part of the frame here. And as you can see, I've not yet treated that. I just masked it off when I finished the material. And that's purely so I can put some glue on here once I get the planar jointer in place. And that will clip on to there. On the back of the frame, we've got just a number of these swiveling casters on it. And these are the type that lock the wheel and also the axle on the casters so they don't move. I've put them on the outside of the frame, so all the weight and all the stability is in the middle. That's a centre of gravity here. But also, so I can get maximum working surface as these revolve as I move the planar joint around. So that's basically the design. The plans are available as part of my YouTube bundle over on the website, www.thewoodcrafter.com. So, with that said, let's have a look how I made this. Like all good projects, it starts with looking at the drawings. I'm taking the cutting lists, I'm taking the diagrams, and I'm just working out what stock I've got. Now this is made up of scrap oak knocking around the workshop, so I'm just working out what part can go where. Now with all the stock identified and everything labelled up for a part number, I'm over to the capex, and I just bring the stock down to its final dimensions before fixing it on the planar jointer. With that done, I can now lay out the stock, and in this case, you'll see me lay out the dados that's going to sit inside the long bearers. I then use a router to make the channel. I plunge down at one end of the channel to define one end, and I repeat that at the other end. And then I can use these two holes to actually go down and make the channel itself. I slowly work down to the appropriate depth, and I also repeat the activity to work to the total width of the channel. And I make sure that I repeat this in both pieces of stock, make sure both are perfectly lined up. And don't worry about that jagged end you can see, we're going to clean that up now with a chisel. So bringing the chisel in, I can then square the end off before finally testing this for fit with the two pieces. With all that looking good and square and tight, I can now glue up these side assemblies. Nothing exciting here, thin layer of glue, clamping pressure using alternative clamps to keep the pressure nice and even, and making sure that this is all sitting nice and square in the frame. Now the rest of the assembly is going to be dominoed together, so here I'm just marking out for those all important domino cuts. Then no surprise, come in with the domino and cut all the holes in the end pieces. Having that done, I can then dry assemble this thing, and here I'm measuring up the final width of this internal frame. That allows me to cut the middle cross member, and then once that's down to size, no problems, I come back in, and I make some more domino holes inside that, and now I'm ready for the final glue up. So I start with the middle frame, gluing up that H piece. I then bring in the end assemblies, bringing everything up so it's nice and tight, but not too tight. Then I use a hammer to actually bring this thing into alignment, making sure it's all smooth. And then I clamp the thing into its final position. A couple of coats of Osmo Poly Finish, as always in my workshop, finishes off to a nice high sheen. 
Leave that to dry overnight and then I can drill some pilot holes and now I can screw in those all important casters. All four casters in place, this frame is now pretty much good to go and I can drop the machine onto it. And there you go, mobile planer jointer. Frames works pretty well. Um, now I did make a mistake. I didn't allow this extrusion here at the back. I took the measurements from the front and didn't check the back. I just assumed it was all the same. So I've just routed out a small profile inside here for the planer jointer to sit inside. And actually, it makes a very, very good feature. Yours is going to be different unless you've got the same model. So adjust the diagrams as you see fit. But yeah, overall, I'm pleased with this. I've now got what I wanted. A mobile base. Hope you found this useful. I'll see you next time for another episode on The Woodcrafter.